What is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. Once again, we are going to take a look at a comparison of two motors. This time, it will be the XE Run G4 17.5 motors. I've got a pair of brand new ones. We're going to pop them open, run them on the tunalizer, and talk about the comparison of the two motors. Now, if you have not seen a tunalizer video before, it is a tune analyzer. Um, when you get into spec motor racing in the RC car world, they're fixed by the number of turns that you can race. So people try to pick and choose better motors. They try to tune them uh, by changing motor timing, rotors, all that fun stuff. And the tunalizer allows you to analyze the tune that you may be putting on your motor. I'm doing a really bad job of getting this out of this box. Oh, that's loud. And I got asked once, do you leave these on or take these off? I take that off. That plastic is just there to protect it. It's going to be like an insulator. Uh, you do get sensor harness in there as well as your best friend in the whole wide world, the instruction manual. Now, Hobbywing does have uh, some different tuning rotors that are going to add or take away RPM from the motor. So that'll let you, you know, the tunalizer allows you to kind of see on paper what those numbers mean. And I am going to take this off. So there, ah, shiny new G4 17.5 with a dual sensor port. It comes with a little rubber stopper so they can uh, protect stuff from getting in there. Look at those beautiful vents. Let all the horsepower sapping heat out of the motor, but that is a good looking motor. But in addition to just being a tune analyzer, the tunalizer also acts as a Bluetooth module for your XC Run series of speed controls. So if you have like XR10s, XR8s, stuff like that, you can use the uh, tunalizer to be the module to hook up to the Hobbywing app and do speed control adjustments and updates as well. The tunalizer also can be used as a benchtop speed control tester. There's a port on the side. You can plug your speed control's input harness in there and uh, run the speed control up and down. So like if you don't have a radio and receiver ready to go, you can use it as a benchtop tester. So before we get too far into this, I want to make sure to mark the motors first. And black marker again. So I'm going to do right here, two dots on the silver. One there, one there. That's motor number two. And this one's going to be motor number one, which is one dot. Super stealthy dot. So Tunalizer will take a two to four cell input and it outputs at either a one or a two cell voltage. I like to do most of my testing for these at a one cell voltage, lowers the RPM, a little easier on the motors, and you get kind of a narrower range of RPM to, to deal with and do math on. The Tunalizer has a few features. You can do a manual motor test where you can run the motor up and down. For the purposes of this test, we're going to be using the auto test because it gives us the most kind of information. So I hold the motor so it doesn't roll away when I start the process. And then it starts to run the motor, slows down, speeds up, slows down, speeds up. And then it'll give us the test is complete. And there is the information that you get. So I have it set to the one cell test voltage. Shows you the current, the KV, which is the RPM of the motor, your end bell timing, so the measured electronic timing of the end bell. And then it shows you each of the sensor readings. And then you can scroll down and it, like I said you scroll down. <laughs> And it shows you the end bell deviation, the rotor symmetry, the hall signal deviation, and then your test conditions for the motor's temperature from the, the temperature sensor that's inside the motor. Not all motors have a temperature sensor. So your end bell deviation is the difference or the variance total of the sensors themselves. The rotor symmetry is how equally charged the north and the, so the, north and the south pole of the rotor is. And then your hall signal deviation is the consistency of the signal strength. Um, of the motor or the the sensor readings so to speak the signal strength consistency on the sensors so the lower these numbers are the better and you see this is one of the best motors i've seen with a zero percent end bell deviation and that's because these guys are all super close so by the time you do the averages on that that turns into a zero so uh, i'm gonna go punch these into the spreadsheet and be run right. the motor auto test one more time in all of these videos i run all the motors twice just to get two pieces of data the engineer told me more data is always better, so at least two runs.
one's fine. But and it gets to see there is going to always be a variance. I just ran that motor like a minute ago, and there's going to be some small changes in the RPM in some of the readings. So we see here we got same information as before, uh, 43.3. Those all look to be the same. We still got zero. The symmetry changed just a touch, and the temperature looks to be exactly the same. So I'm going to go punch these in the spreadsheet. Back out of here, and then so this is this was motor number one according to uh, my sweet black dot. This one's motor number two. I'm not gonna flip it over. I'm just gonna hold it. So auto test. And there you have it. So a little bit. I think it's a point two higher current. The timing looks to be about the same, maybe going to have a little bit more variance this time. Yeah, one degree variance, symmetry is a little more off, and the hall signal deviation is a little bit off. So this one, all these numbers being a little bit higher, you can kind of see right away a little bit of difference between these two motors. So I'm going to go punch these into the spreadsheet. All right, same motor. This is motor two, test number two. And the thing, uh, let's see here. So everything looks to be yeah, about the same again and about the same again. So not a lot of changes there. Everybody's favorite part of these videos is the spreadsheet. And I just punch all the numbers in here so we can get a little side-by-side -side look at what's going on. And you can see motor number one, obviously the winner this time, mainly because the, the, the sensor board on this one looks to be a little bit better, a little more consistent, uh, lowered, lowered all the other readings for the most part. And my uh, KV per amp number that I put on here, which I take the KV and I divide it by the current draw is a loose guideline for another i guess metric to work with that's a simple at a glance comparison of two motors in similar condition and the reason i say that it will skew your uh, perception of a motor if that motor's way off but the two motors are different types it's to compare and when i say types let's say one's got a way weaker rotor it's going to maybe make that number seem a lot lower but that motor is going to also have more rpm so that may be in your favor for whatever you're doing so it's just a another metric to compare and i put it in the spreadsheet and it fills itself in so it's, it's pretty cool if you guys know how to work spreadsheets it's neat you can make it do math for you and don't mess up but you can see the the rpms are pretty close and the difference kind of comes down to that little 0.2 of an amp draw difference and that that doesn't seem like a huge difference overall but it's when you're coming down a split and hairs if i was to say have a practice motor and a primary motor or i wanted to make sure i had my best motor in in this situation probably pick rotor or uh, motor number one tunalizer also does manual motor tests so if you just need to check a motor uh, when you first press it or fire it up you're going to ask you how many poles the motor has this is a two-pole motor you get in here and then you can use the knob as your throttle control to run the motor up and down reels gently and you can use this as a troubleshooter for testing motors making sure sensor board sensor wire stuff like that works and it even goes reverse too so that's that's neat uh, back out of here and then you got your throttle output this is for when you do the speed control testing you can plug a speed control input harness onto the side and use it to like a uh, throttle on your radio for the most part uh, get into the settings and this is where you can control you can set the poles if you already have it powered up so you don't have to cycle it on and off uh, your test voltage which can do uh, th one cell voltage or two cell voltage i do most of my bench stops bench top stuff at one cell voltage just so that if i want to rev up the motor or whatever it's not screaming the rpm and then you can scroll down you get reverse rotation so if you want to check the motors backwards for like opposite rotation transmissions drift stuff thing, rock crawlers things like that you turn the beep on and off reset any of your settings that you did and then this will give you updates and stuff like that and the device information as we mentioned this will work as a bluetooth module for your xe run series of speed controls or any of the speed controls that work with the hobbywing app or the ota or the lcd programming box will not do the tuning for like the quick runs and stuff like that though unfortunately or some of the the more basic lineups it's only for the ones that work with the OTA or the LCD programming box, like the XE Run series and the Max series, Platinums, stuff like that. It also can test sensorless motors. So if you want to do sensorless motor testing, it works without the sensor wire. You just obviously don't get the sensor information because it's not there. It, it's been asked, does this work with brush motors? Does not work with brush motors, sorry. And it does work with any, it doesn't have to be a hobby wing motor. This will run for the most part any of the today's modern style brushless motors. Um, it does take, like I said, two, 2S to 4S input, but it output it either a 1s or a 2s if you do have any questions comments or concerns feel free to shoot us an email northamerica at hobbywing.com 
Don't forget, we also do a podcast. It's called RC Stuff, powered by Hobby Wing. Look it up on your favorite podcast service and find out how to enter to win. We give away a free Hobby Wing system each and every episode. Those are new on the first and third Friday each and every month. And as always, nerd friends, thanks for tuning in. Another episode of The Charlie Show, new every Tuesday, right here on the Hobby Wing official YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.